Hi, I'm Rob Cosman. Welcome to my shop. Secrets to perfect fitting tenon shoulders is what I want to talk to you about today. This is how the shoulders should fit in a mortise and tenon joint. Nice and tight all the way around. Difficult for some? I'm going to show you everything I know about it. I'm Rob Cosman and welcome to my shop. We make it our job to help take your woodworking to the next level. If you're new and you haven't subscribed, please do so. Hit the notification bell so you'll receive alerts when we release a new video. And anytime we use a special tool, we'll always leave a description down below. All right, let's get to work. If you plan to build fine furniture, you really need to learn to cut a mortise and tenon joint. It's found in an awful lot of fine furniture. It's a very strong joint. It's something that will last for centuries. Now, if you need help with that, I'll leave a link below on a video we did entitled Hand Cutting Mortise and Tendon Joints. But what I want to focus on today is probably the most difficult part, particularly for people just getting started in this, and that is getting that shoulder to be perfectly tight all the way around. That's really what makes the joint. It doesn't really, <coughs> well, it does matter how well it fits inside, but this is the part that you see, and often you see all four surfaces. I've got nine, call them secrets, that I think will help you in this and what we're going to do is tackle them one at a time, make sure you understand it, and hopefully it will improve your mortise and tenon joints. Okay, as we start this, let's take a close look at the joint so we can understand what it is we're trying to achieve. So we have four shoulders, and if you look closely, all of them are nice and tight. And obviously a joint like this is a sum of the parts, which means if there's 10 procedures, you can't do four of them at 80%, and the other six at 100% and expect a result like this. So you have to maintain that same level of precision throughout the entire process. So what we're gonna work on first is we're gonna work on the piece that has the tenon in it, and that's the square peg at the end that fits into a mating square hole. So what I will do is I'm working up to a knife line, always a knife line, not a pencil. Knife is more accurate. So here's the, I've sawn it to there, and now I'm gonna go in with my shooting board because I can, I can depend on this to produce a surface, particularly on the end, that when I'm done will be square to the, to the edge and square to the face, and that's critical. Now, the first thing I have to do before planing this is protect these fibers over here. So what I'm going to do is take a plane blade or a chisel or a marking knife, and I'm gonna put it in that gauge line, and I'm just going to carry that over to this side so that when I'm down here like this, I pull the board away, I can come in and I can cut a little chamfer on the far side right to that line. And now when I cut across the end of this board, I don't have to worry about fibers breaking off out there. And as I get closer and closer, and closer to the line, the little short fibers between the cut and the end of the board will start to break away and it'll show a gap. And then I'll just keep shooting until eventually that gap disappears and the end of the board ends up being nice and tight against the end of the plane. I don't see any remnant of the gap, so that's good. Now, you wanna check that. So when you're checking, make sure you're using a reliable square. Make sure there isn't any dried glue in there that's gonna prevent that from laying flat against the face. Obviously, we've already prepared these edges, so these edges need to be square to the face, and they need to be parallel to one another. Hold that up to the light, drop it down, shouldn't see any light, and then do the same thing on the face. And if everything checks out, then you can proceed. Okay, second thing, the corresponding piece, this is what one we just did, although this is taken a little bit farther, is going to fit into this piece. So these shoulders are going to be nice and parallel to the end of this tenon, and they're going to be square to this piece, which means when they go into this opposite piece, as long as that mortise has been cut to be parallel to the sides, then this face needs to be nice and square as well. If it's small enough, I do it on the, on the uh, shooting board. If it's too big, then you have to do it stand, uh, held up on the bench. Either way, you've got to check it. So we'll go in. Have the direction to get a finer cut. And then just like we checked 
the tenon go in there referencing off of the face and make sure that this is square to the face so that when that joint goes together those this shoulder and this shoulder will come together at the same time all right our third tip is going to be in dealing with the shoulder lines and that's where we're going to use a marking gauge now we've squared the end of this board so that it is square to the face and to the edge and then we do that so that when we cut our shoulder the tool we use will make sure that it is parallel to that end so you want a good marking gauge one that has a flat face so it doesn't wobble when you're using it one that is good and sharp so it'll sever those cross grain fibers and give you a perfect shoulder line so I've set this based on the depth of the of the mortise come in here and I'm going to reference the face off the end of the board making sure in fact my focus and attention is here not out here in the cutter and I'll, I will drag that up. You do it a couple of times if you want to make sure it's nice and deep. Then across the edge, and you want these to be really deep because it makes it a whole lot easier to get that shoulder perfect after you've sawn them in case you didn't get it perfect from the saw. Nice thing about a round or a wheel style gauge is that you can actually roll it to get that last little bit. Now we've got a good line that goes all the way around. Obviously when the, those uh, surface number four and number one meet, it's exactly where you would expect it to be and it's a continuous line. Now number four is just gonna be a little more re-emphasis on what something we just covered in number three. And that is when we make these gauge lines, you want them to be as deep as you can comfortably get them. And here's why, when it comes time to uh, cutting these shoulders and if you don't saw them perfectly if you've got a nice deep gauge line it'll leave a little severed slice right here that you will then be able to set your chisel in to go in and correct it it's it's uh, really imperative that that be sharp and accurate so that those lines can be trusted and if you have to you can set your chisel on there and know that as long as you maintain that little edge that joint's going to go together just the way you expect. Okay, this is number five. This involves a very precise cut. We want, hopefully, to be able to cut that shoulder with our saw and not have to do anything for it. That's what we're shooting for. I'm not a fan of trying to cut back here and then pair back to the line. The aim is get it right the first time. So to help us do that, here's what we can do. If we take a sharp chisel, keep the angle of attack, fairly low and come in here. Now this is the waist and I'll identify it as such. I'll just put an X on here. Remember we cut a nice deep shoulder line. Here's another reason why. I'm going to come in with my chisel and I'm going to cut a little trough. Now you can use a wider chisel but the problem with a wider chisel because it makes a wider cut it requires a lot more force. The more force you use the less control you have. So I prefer to do smaller. Now, by removing that, we have a little trough giving us a nice wall that we can lay our saw teeth up against and that will enable us to start exactly where we want. We're now ready to make the saw cut. I'm using a bench hook, which is nothing more than a shop built apparatus, has a cleat on the front to help resist the pushing action of the saw. We've got a fence on the back. It's a sacrificial piece, so the fence stops short of the edge so that as I make whatever cut, I'm not dropping down into my bench, I'm cutting into the shooting board. So what I'm going to do is have that just out beyond the fence a little bit. I'm gonna squeeze the two so it's nice and firm. Now I'm using a crosscut saw that has very narrow set. In fact, this only has two thousandths of an inch per side. That means about half the thickness of a sheet of paper. And the reason is I want that line to be as clean as possible. I love to flood this with light. I've actually got magnifiers on to help see even better. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to squeeze the board with my thumb and my middle finger. I'm going to use my index finger as a means of helping that saw start exactly where I want. Now remember, we've got that little trough so we can lay our saw in there and actually feel it come up against that shoulder. And we can get that cut started. I prefer to saw with the saw being level the entire time. 
then you're not going too deep on one side or the other. But once you've got it, make this cut up here, then all you can, all your energy and attention can be focused on making that cut plumb. Cut down to your line, don't go further. It's not quite deep enough, so I've got to go back and make that a little bit deeper so I meet it. Actually, I've got to come down with the shoulder, cut a little bit more too. Now in a situation like this, I'm actually going to push against this piece, which will help keep my saw tracking. There. All right. Okay, I had to go in and cut the other shoulder because when we did this one, we actually did it right. So here's what we're looking for. That heavy cut we made with the marking gauge left a nicely severed line right there. Not very deep, but you can see it. And if there were any material left above, we would be able to set our chisel on here and then pair from there. Well, we actually got that right. So I went over and I did this one. And on this, I purposely left some material. So if you'll see, if you look closely, there's your severed line from the marking gauge. And this is what we can use as a guide. Now, this is where, this is probably one of the best tips of the video. You can use a shoulder plane. The only problem with a shoulder plane is you have to worry about the tear that you're gonna get on this side. And sometimes I think this is, depending on how severe it is, or how much material you have to move, I sometimes think this is a better way of doing it. I'm gonna stay away from the outside edge at first, but I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna set my chisel right on that gauge line, which is real easy to find. And then I'm gonna pair straight in to the shoulder with a slight undercutting. And then rather than take up that much material, I'll just take a smaller cut, which allows me to reference on the part I've already cut. And because I'm taking a small cut, I don't have to push as hard, that way I have a lot more control. And I can go in and just slice away, always referencing off of that little shelf left from the marking gauge. The fact that it's undercut in here doesn't matter because this part out on the edge or on the perimeter is what's going to reference up against my piece that houses the mortise. And I'll just finish that cut. I wouldn't be extreme in undercutting, but definitely you want to you want to go slightly below the surface. Now out here we need to follow the gauge line that we left on the edge. If we go below, then it's going to show. So we need to stay right on that and do the same thing on this side. If your chisels are nice and sharp, then you have or you will not have any problem doing this. Just take a little bit at a time. You can't leave any debris in here. It all has to be removed. Any debris will possibly prevent that joint from closing and you don't want to discover that when there's glue on it. You want to come in here and make sure that you finish that saw cut if you didn't do it at the time you were actually sawing. really advantageous to spend some time with your saw so that you get that right off of the saw the first time and you don't have to come back and do this. But if you do, that's the best way to do it. Okay, tip number eight. Carefully inspect this shoulder line and it wants to be continuous all the way around. So we go across the face, see how it meets here. We don't want any divots, nor do we want any bumps. Come all the way along here. I see a little bit of raised material right there. So I've got to go in and get rid of that. Same ideas on the larger face. I'm going to reference off of that gauge line 
I'm going to remove that. Now, as a final inspection, we go through and we make sure that there isn't any debris anywhere on those inside corners. That's the type of thing that, as I mentioned a few times already, will prevent that joint from closing on you. And finding it when there's glue all over everything is not fun. A couple extra minutes on this step will save a whole lot of grief in the assembly process. Okay, final step number nine or final tip is the clamping. Once this is all glued up, you want to make sure that your clamp is applied properly so that you're not pulling it one way or the other. So I like to put it, in, so it provides me with a third hand. I'll close that joint. Obviously there would be glue on there. Now, all I'm doing is just making sure that that comes tight. And if you need to have protective blocks on here, make sure you do. Get that centered. So I want the pressure going right down the middle. And I want the bar of the clamp going right down the middle of the joint as well. So if everything is lined up properly, that's not going to pull it one way or the other. You don't need excessive pressure. Once it's tight, it's tight. You don't need to try to pull one piece through the other. So this clamp needs to be right down through the middle of that. And where this pad meets should be right in the middle. And where this pad meets, right in the middle. So your line of force is keeping everything nice and square. Do that, your joint will come out perfect. You'll be proud of it and it'll last for centuries. Hi, if you like my work, if you like my style of teaching, click on any one of these videos to help take your woodworking to the next level. And I've always said, better tools make it a whole lot easier. If you click on the icon with the plane and the chisel, it'll take you to our website, introduce you to all of our tools, and also talk to you about our online and in-person workshops. Good luck in your woodwork.